Hello, 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 and welcome back to The Witcher 3! It's time to get on with the main quest of Blood and Wine. Finally, after doing 7,000 bajillion and five uh, side quests. So, here we are. Regis! Damn it. Locked. No way I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here. Slightly less bright now, but... That's better. It also doesn't look as stupid. Wow, I've amassed quite a lot of crap. Yep, that's a good sword. How do I have that? <clears throat> right, let's do some runes. Armor piercing is always good for steel. Freeze and... Ooh, adrenaline game, okay, that's good. So... And I forgot to drink a potion! <clears throat> Go me! Climb up the ledge. And what would you look at that? The hell in his eye. Ought to use it. Ooh, an illusion. <gasps> loot. That's interesting. Someone didn't want their loot found. Sword. Good sword! Nah. Crap sword. <laughs> Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliche can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlove wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Abraxa had taken an interest in it. That's mildly creepy.
It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Covinaris' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Obliterae. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Covinarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it, just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Covinaris gave a rather poetic name, Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Detlef's hideout. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. Every scene. <laughs> it comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here. Guests who owe their hosts meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Detlaf? You're both higher vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Uh... There is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being... Well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Okay. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guessed correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. <sighs> Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's mamoon glands, but closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. Music, though. It's a vibe. This whole game is a vibe. What was that? A raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area. And I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect to your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake. <laughs> Option two is my mood right now. 
but I've got to... Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? <sighs> so, think you've set a nice little trap for me? Sorry. Wanna get me to confess? Gonna have to try harder. <laughs> I love a challenge. In that case, my ears are cocked. What must I do? <sighs> How about you get the ball rolling? Reveal one of your secrets. Vampires, intriguing creatures, must lead fascinating lives. Anything in particular interest you? Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbour's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, a Dash. But what have you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back. Defeated the wild hunt together. Is that right, weird? Ooh. Seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough. But it's a conversation we'll have another time. Need to know more about you now. Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlaf, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate? Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity's a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. <laughs> always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? 
something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible, as my presence proves. But, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit, but Triss helped me get it back. Actually, pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living higher vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say. But I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? You see, I haven't read the books yet. I will. That's when I finish this, but um <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like for a question like this, I want to have that knowledge. Um because I mean, given I mean, just given what I know right now, like there was the whole thing, like Lambert's whole story. Like he know he didn't want to be a Witcher. He just um he got forced into it. Well, whereas with Geralt, it's never been really stated at any point. I mean, he sort of alludes to not choosing to become one, but he seems pretty happy being one. So. Or at least as happy as you can be. So, I mean, because he, he, you know he has, he, he he just he travels around, he kills monsters, he dates Yennefer. It seems pretty fine, you know. So, I just from what I know from the games, maybe my opinion on this will change once I read the books. But I'm just gonna go with yes. See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, you're determined to get an answer. To find out if I like being a Witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight, and nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Nothing, Geralt. <laughs> Ever vigilant, even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caraberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. 
for somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the White survived entirely unmolested. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons. Spoons? You spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Or perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote. No more. Come on. Search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or, uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt, I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse in one place. That a coincidence? Or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that White. Uses it in its brews. Do you imagine the White will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were going to make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. Okay, well first let's get rid of this potion. Okay, um, well, let's fast travel. not miss you from the first game. Anyway. Crouch. Swings on the left side. Our guests, never a good omen. Yeah, when he swings on the left side, he swings backhand, like he would uh, a polo. It's really cool detail. Spoons are 
were beating out some kind of rhythm, a message, trying to tell me something. shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> against Dark Rage Oil Ignean Eodon. Search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. Is that a key? White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Mm, just a spoon. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. Well, that was part of the curse. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. have anything to do with the curse none shall sit and dine with you at your table it makes sense broken neck indentation in the skull's lateral surface smacked in the head with something heavy right on bit right off teeth all knocked out somebody tried to force feed him no claw or fang marks probably choked to death name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. Dear Master Levasseur, I hope you I know you track outlaws for pay. 
I have an unusual assignment for you. <clears throat> now don't you wonder why I've drawn you out here, and why we cannot meet in person. You see, in my present situation, any kind of meeting is very risky, not so much for me, as for the person with whom I meet. For I am afflicted by a curse, or, as I hope when my turn to you, the side effect of medicine given to you some time ago by a herbalist. Soon after I visited this herbalist, she disappeared without trace. I desperately wish to understand my illness, so I wish to hire you to find her. When you do, learn as much from her as you can about the medicine she gave me. If my suffering is a result of her wickedness, then make her provide an antidote. I assure you I have ample wealth and will reward you with no small part of it for your services. If it turns out my suffering is not the fault of the herbalist, please let her go. I will then have a different task for you, because this shall mean I am afflicted by a terrible curse which only the gods can cure. I believe it was cast upon me by a certain beggar who came by the manor while I was ha hosting a soiree a few with it for a few friends. If you can find that vagrant, I will pay you double. Sadly, all I remember of him is that he sold mirrors. I am aware this is not much aid for your hunt, yet I trust in your considerable talents and wish you the best of luck. Mardin Trastamara. Sold mirrors, hmm? There's a description. White's a true collector. This certifies the item of auction. An antique spoon key forged at the Christopherson and Sons workshop in 1210. It belongs to Smeagol's Circus. I see what you did there, game. I see what you did there. Smeagol. Smeagol was played by Andy, Andy Circus in Lord of the Rings. See what you did there. Well, this game really likes uh, its um, really likes its Lord of the Rings references. seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Cauldron I was looking for. White's not particularly tidy. Table's set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old.
This is probably gonna go horribly wrong. Yes, no. I'm not going to hurt you. Want to help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Is right. Words of the curse were None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. See I don't want to get this wrong. <laughs> uh, I I think it's option three. such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. Tasty. Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. stench. it try and look at itself in the fountain. Mm. <laughs> Doing this right. <laughs> right? Dogs. I hate you. 
Actually, it went pretty far. Easy. Not gonna hurt you. Eat. I must eat. I'll take you someplace safe. Oh, is gonna take her home? So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons, and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Alright. Guess we have an old person in our house now. How were two curses a lovely lassie, you scum? Even a horse drops if you ride it at a constant gallop. Where are you?
Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Pretty helpful creatures, calling them often. I try not to overdo it, but they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? <laughs> it's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. All right, so what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Okay. Tesha Mudna. <coughs> What's it like? It is a place of torment, a torture chamber. Long ago, shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us, seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Tesha Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage. Sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. Well, this can't go wrong. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham Mutna, take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some sangurium, a solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallon to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. Uh, your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. <sighs> High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's spinning already, and you're... You're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me. Do witches taste good? Those words should not have just come out of my mouth. <laughs> I am very sorry. <laughs>
We have arrived. The sacrificial chamber of torture and torment lies underground. Sure you know what you're doing? I can only hope I do. Please, let's go. The longer we delay, the less control I shall have of my faculties. I'd really prefer not to hurt you. I'd prefer for you not to hurt me as well. You lead. Skurvers must be getting close to their feeding ground. Correct. I told you there'd be danger. Beyond this wall lies... An ancient vampire dungeon. Seen a lot of things in my time. Nothing quite like this, though. My, I feel honored. A man with such a wealth of experience, yet I'm about to show him something new. Now, Sarcasm. to open it. It's an ancient form of protection against unwanted guests. The mechanism which releases the latch reacts only to a higher vampire's blood. Tricky mechanisms, a vampire hideout. Fortified, secured. Must have been important to your species once, Toussaint. It shall always be so. During the conjunction, the gate from our world into this one opened upon this land and no other. This was the first system. This place. There's evil here. Death hangs in the air. Yes. A great many beings have breathed their last here. Cliffs are carved into the rock. Coated with blood used to be. They mean something? They're emblems. Symbols of, uh, well, what you would call tribes, dispersed throughout the world after the conjunction. My ancestors placed them here to remind us of where we came from. Patrick Cage versus Seems Free Seems your kind assembled a peculiar little library. Indeed. Though I personally did not lay a hand to it. What's this symbol mean? It's the symbol of the Tadet. Those who went east, beyond the Blue Mountains. And this one? Which tribe's this? Garishel. My tribe, and Dedlaus. We both remained in this part of the world. Cells? Who for? Ah, disgraceful. Excruciatingly so, this particular page from my history. I'd rather not summon the demons of the past if it's... All right with you. Whose is this cliff? Amarun. They ventured beyond the sea. And this one? Which tribe's this? Garishan. Oh, My tribe, saying. and Dedlas. We both remained in this part of the world. Stuff. Oh, that's shit. That's worse. That's way worse. It's worse. Oh, damn. That's good boots.
charming place. But what are all those cages for? Mentioned one vampire being kept here. Yes, well, you see, humanitarians is something my ancestors were not. They concluded Kagmar would best be punished if he were tormented with the scent of blood he could not taste. Thus, they also kept humans here. Humans whose blood they slowly let. Kagma ranted and raged in pain as those, those humans slowly bled to death. They treated them like livestock, live bait. I'd like to be able to turn back time, deny it, but alas, I can do neither. Feel shame for my brethren, that is all I can do. Don't take it so hard. Nothing you could have done about it. Let's get to work. Well, that was awkward. Fine. I prepared the bait. Please be so kind and place it. Ideally at the tunnel entrances. The Zen will spread most effectively then. Place the bait at the tunnel entrances. Monsters will catch its scent more quickly. But I think how these tunnels got here sent shivers. It was the natural order of things. The place reeked of death and it attracted necrophages. Three done, one left. Think this'll work? I certainly hope so. I mean, stench is so thick, I wager it carries clear to Novigrad. This'll hold. Doesn't look like anything special. I told you, Kagmar thrashed about inside it for over two centuries. Appearances can be deceiving. Bait set. What now? I shall enter the cage. You must chain me inside. The bars are made of an alloy that will prevent me from transforming into mist. Kinda thought you wouldn't want to. I shall be in great pain. My sole thought being to stop that pain. I cannot know what I will do. We must hurry. The beasts have caught the scent. Also, my head I started spinning. That the blood? Uh, someone who's never experienced a vampire's bloodlust does not know the true meaning of thirst. safe word. You know, something you'll say when you can't take it anymore. And what would you do once I uttered it? Don't know. Calm it down. Somehow. Please. Mm -hmm. We just have smelled the blood. Let you out. Yeah. 
a few hours. Sent won't bother me anymore. it in this state. Tell me how. I'll help you. Any better? Far from ideal. And some time must pass before I fully recover. But yes, a bit better. Thank you. <coughs> Never expected it to be like that. You didn't tell me. We need not discuss it. But we do. Because if I'd known you were going to subject yourself to torture... What would you have done? Found dead love some other way. I did not wish you to use any other way. Did that occur to you? No. Because I thought no being would ever willingly subject itself to that kind of pain. You vampires aren't any different from us in that regard. I told you. The pain is my way of paying my debt. The enormous debt I owe Detlaf. If I had to do it again, I would in a heartbeat. Resonance, it's ready. Are you certain you followed the formula? The proportions were exact, the brewing time precise. This is important, Geralt. The slightest deviation could cost even a witcher dearly. Relax. Got some experience brewing potions. Very well. In that case, let's begin. Excuse me. I shall only take a moment. You jump the queue, sir. But Count, sir, you must understand. I have a meeting. The Count... Sir, you were next. Please, take a seat. This gentleman was here first. Step down or you shall regret it. Ah, <laughs> fails to realize he was your friend, Count. It was then I ordered him to give up his seat and step off the stand. If only you'd seen his face. We got him good, didn't we, Detlav? And then Mother insisted we buy the mill. <laughs> Curious, eh? At least I've a yarn to spin for friends and associates. Forgive me. What?
Awake at last, you ride like a squirrel caught in a snare. I'd begun to fear they were death throes, that you'd departed. <clears throat> uh, uh, sure wasn't pleasant, but it worked. What did you see? Delacroix. His death did not come easy. Seems Dedlaff had made friends with him, still killed him, chopped up his corpse, and he was overcome with fury, remorse, cut off the hand that had committed the murder. Hmm, interesting. And entirely unlike the Detlef I know. See anything else? Saw a moment. Delacroix did something selfless. Was kind to Detlef. Guess it could have been the start of their friendship. Why the uncertainty? Nothing extraordinary about it. Normal, everyday situation, really. Visions were supposed to issue from strong emotions. Clearly, the situation provoked such emotions in Detlef. Keep in mind, he did later murder Delacroix. Killing someone who's grown dear to us, it's bound to elicit strong emotion. Vampires are no different in that regard. Did you see anything else? There was something. Showed up twice in the vision. A boot black stand. Dedlau first met Delacroix there. Went back after the murder, actually. Peculiar. Stand was somewhere in the port district. And the boot black acted as if he knew Dedlauf. Hmm. That would be even odder. Perhaps we should have a chat with the lad. Or I would expect no breakthroughs. It's our only lead. I'll go talk to him. Coming with. I shall join you later if it's no trouble. I don't yet feel strong enough to venture out. That's fair. Rest up. Be back as soon as I learn anything. Well, now I understand why this DLC is called Blood and Wine. <laughs> In order. To lose one's good name, it is worse than death. Oh, Witcher, greetings. Kind of you to come. Matilda and I, we've a surprise for you. Hmm, you two seem to be getting along. We are. There came a point we realized we had no grounds to quarrel. Things became altogether pleasant. And a bit spicy. Oh. Romantic. Quite. Uh, Got it. Needn't say more. Glad things are going well for you. Well, that was quick. <laughs> What's the surprise? Some new monster I need to kill? No. Something far more pleasant. We've produced a wine. According to the best sommeliers, it might just dethrone Estes. We owe this success to you. So, if you'd agree... We'd like to name it after you. What shall we call it? <laughs> Why not White Wolf? Wild, with character. It fits perfectly. If you wouldn't mind, we'd like to send a few bottles to your home every so often. I'd be honored. Thanks. 
No, we thank you. Take care, Witcher. That's nice of them. Uh, what was that other one? <laughs> you rested Fox Hollow from Loth half Bridge uh, Clutch. You deserve a monument. Oh, sorry, kid. your boots before you take another step. Don't slurp your food. Don't eat with your hands. Don't pick your teeth with your knife. What? Oh, I'm just jesting. You, sir, clearly were not born in a barn. Welcome to the pheasantry. The best auberge in all the duchy. Spoon like this. When you set a place, where's it go? My, oh my. It seems rather a fanciful bouillon spoon. Or a key of some sort. There's a note here. Yeah, note led me here. Any idea what the key might open? Never seen it before. But you might search the cellars. The previous owner left all sorts of knickknacks there. Okay. See you later. Eat, drink, and be merry. It's annoying, because I want to play Gwen with people yoga. now, but like... I never built on my deck or anything, so... Yeah, it's annoying. Okay. Where are the stairs? The... the downstairs. Did you guess, uh, our sweet shining sun? Aha. Uh -huh. Golem's cookbook. Wow, we're going quite far. Okay. <laughs> That's in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Let's fast travel.
Faster. Roach refuses. Run, okay. Roach. Horses are so finicky. Like, for real. <laughs> yes, the horse mechanics video was it is happening. I've been I've recorded some footage for it, so um this one missed. Scroll wheel will stop being broken. for that. Crap. You little fart! So how would you explain it? Whether it pours for a week or the sun bakes our pates, we've always mud up to our ankles here. You can't blame me for Beauclair's fickle weather. Fickle weather? I've seen you. You empty your chamber pot in front of our shop each morn, so folks will dirty their boots go to you to get them cleaned. A far-fetched conspiracy theory, sirs. I'll conspire to welt your bum with my belt. Come here! Leave him alone. Just who the spit are you? A witcher, and I'd advise you to go back where you came from. I thought witches defend men from monsters, not cheats from justice. Need to talk to the boy. 
You can chat to him all you like, after we tan his hide. So stand down. Not gonna happen. Won't it? Well, then we'll thrash you as well, which is all the same to me. Damn. Punch, punch time. We'll break your legs, vagrant. Teach you to help scoff lures and cheats. Let's charge! Take him for a ride! Oh, Mumsy! Stunlocking the game. I don't appreciate being stunlocked. I may say so. What's the meaning of this? The brawl? Who started it? I'm investigating the beast on the Duchess's orders. Ah, yes. We've heard of you. And this man. What are they doing? Nothing really. Had a little misunderstanding. Figured it out though. Uh huh. I see. As the Duchess's protege, you may go. But this lot, that's another matter. You'll come with us. Some time in a cell ought to scare the dimwits out of you. Come on. <laughs> He's just like, sitting back, enjoying the show. You're very good with your fists, sir. Wouldn't be looking for work, would you? We'd make a fine duo. Listen, I'm interested in a certain gentleman. Wait, wait! Before we get to talking, please, take a seat. But my boots are clean. In this city, no boots are clean unless they've just come off my stamp. A seat, sir, please. What polishing armor? So then. Who was it you wanted to ask about? One of your patrons. Tall, elegant black frock. Not from around here. An arrival? Hmm. Indeed. I hear a faint bell ringing. A modest sum might make it sing out loud and clear. How much? Let's say... 500 crowns. 500? What? <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. What would you even do with that kind of coin? Expand my venture. I'm sure you can imagine. Have a proper stand with a big sign. I want a new box too. New polishes, new brushes. And if I've enough coin left, I'll buy a share in a launderer's. Get wastewater for free. Hmm. <laughs> Got it all planned out. I should think so. Capital is all I require. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't figure something out. I would not really like to pay 500. I would pay 405. Hmm, it's not quite... I don't know. That are not enough for you? 452. Ah, see? I knew we'd clinch it. I'll pay you exactly 452. <laughs> Guess I can agree to that. A thousand thanks. I shan't forget it. Now to the matter at hand. I know the fellow you seek, though I don't know his name. A steady patron. Gets his boots cleaned every few days. He's very good to me. Always pays me a premium. Know where I might find him? <coughs> no, but you could wait here. Perhaps he'll stop by. Don't have the time for that. Sure you don't know where to find him? Or maybe notice which direction he came from? When I clean boots, sir, I do not look up to see where folk come from. I clean. It seems you're having a rough go of it. Oh, you're here. Feeling better? I am, thank you. The local necropolis. The air does wonders for him. 
Now, if I might intercede, I dare say I've the right question to ask. Young man, you see this vial? One drop added to your boot polish will help you wipe even the most encrusted boot clean as the dome of St. Lebioda's Cathedral. With it, you will serve three times as many patrons at a fraction of the effort, and piles more coin. I am prepared to give you this vial if you tell me where the man we seek lives. Uh, but you won't hurt him, will you? The gentleman's art true, but he's kind. In point of fact, he's a friend. Yet we had a falling out of sorts and would like to straighten matters out. I leave his boots at the door of a house near the port. The door is red, but I do not know if the gentleman lives there. Worth checking. Might happen on a lead. Would you let me scrape the dirt off your kickers before you go? With all due respect, sirs, your boots could stand a cleaning. Thank you. Perhaps later. You're telling me I just spent 452 crowds for nothing? <laughs> God damn it. If the game starts, starts calling me out on my poor life Handle choices again. Pretty well. Finding the right approach. That's the trick to dealing with children. Mm, yeah, saw that. Meaning, the right thing to bribe them with. Red door. One that Boot Black mentioned. down you might just as well stand out in the street pound on a drum and holler deck laugh I'm coming for you a bit more finesse I implore you let's hear your idea give me a moment Consider becoming a burglar? A skill like that had come in awful handy. I considered it briefly, but ultimately concluded it would be terribly dull. Come. Recently, his scent is still strong. Let's look around. Old toy, no use to anyone. Shame, must have brought someone joy sometime. It's rather disturbing. Hmm. Somebody fixed this recently. Someone's fixing old toys. No dust mark. Somebody moved this here recently. Nice little trinket. Why is he living in a toy shop of all places? That's a little weird. Attic, let's go. So this is his nest. Need to look around. Detlaf van der Heretain, you do not know us, but we know you to be a vampire. We know also of your weakness for the wench they call Renoued. Now you know this. We shall chain her down and let rats feed on her. We shall flay the skin from her flesh. Yet you can save her. You need but travel to Beauclair, where you shall slay five men in the manner we prescribe. You must complete the killing in three days. Fail, and the next letter you receive will contain a memento of your failure, your beloved's finger. There you have it. 
Proof positive Detlav killed not of his own accord. A blackmailer sunk his claws into him. Any idea what it could be? Detlav have any enemies? Indeed. Detlav gains foes occasionally, but they never live long. One might have managed to evade him. Possible in theory, but I know of none. It would have to be someone devilishly dangerous. As you well know, having faced Detlaf yourself, whoever it is, it is someone new. Who's Renawed? His one-time lover. The sole human woman with whom he was very close. Because she accepted him. With her aid and care, he found a place for himself in this hostile world. She began the work that I strive to continue. Ever meet her? Never had the pleasure, alas. She deserted him a time before he came around to save me, though he always claimed she'd gone missing. Take it you have your doubts. I know humans better than he does. Their capacity to be disloyal, dishonest. I also know she took her things. Not something one associates with the kidnapped, or those who disappear against their will. I'll save you the trouble of asking. No, I don't know why she left. I can, however, hazard a guess that Detlaf grew angry one day, showed another, more monstrous side. Detlaf's anger could frighten anyone off, though most who see it get no chance to flee. Detlaf have trouble letting go, accepting that she'd left him? Is that so hard to believe? Do you know no humans who've struggled with just such a thing? And Detlaf is so much more emotional than most humans. Not only was she his beloved, his lover, his mate, she was a member of his pack, and one never leaves one's pack voluntarily. Dedloff ever try to find her? I mean, if she was that important, higher vampires have their ways, all kinds. Should have been easy as pie for him. Geralt, as you rightly noted, we are vampires, not miracle workers. He searched for months on end before giving up. Clearly, Renoued knew him all too well. Enough to cover her tracks, leave no way for him to find her. Even if Renoued did abandon him that time, looks like someone's actually kidnapped her this time. Hard to argue with that, and hard to foresee what he's prepared to do to free her, get her back. He's prepared to kill, that's clear. As would you be for Yennefer. He kills, for he cares for her deeply. And that blood, those individuals, they mean nothing to him. Yeah, I get it now. He's out to rescue a female from his pack. Exactly. Right, so someone's blackmailing him. We know that. Still have no idea who. Need to look around some more. Tools were used recently. Detlaf unwind by fixing toys between murders? Really now, Geralt, must you? Nice tune. Indeed. I'm not certain why, but it reminds me of home. Our true home from before the conjunction of spheres. Sometimes I think I might end up like one of these toys. I find these puppets rather disturbing. Woman's likeness. Bit smudged. That Renoued? I don't know. As I said, I never met her. Reminds me of someone. Who? Not sure. Can't help feeling I've seen that face before, though. I certainly don't recognize it. of paper, name on each. Count Crespi, Count Dulac, Milton de Peyrac Peyron, Count de La Croix. Detlaf's victims, one and all, but that's not his hand. Must have come from whoever wrote the letter. 
All of it written using the same ink. See the color? Ink was dyed with cinnabarite. Rare mineral, pretty much found only in... Nazaire. But I fear it means very little. Anyone could have imported such ink. Fair enough. Still worth remembering. Look, this slip is stained. With wine. Not much to go on either, especially not in Beauclair. Perhaps. Yet perhaps also worth remembering. Blackmailer. And a curious who it could be. Why is that? Regis. Somebody kidnapped a vampire's lover. Bold to begin with. Now they're forcing the vampire to kill. A vampire you yourself insisted no murderer. Blackmailer's skilled. Someone special. Hmm. Astute. Now that I think of it, I'm beginning to wonder if... It's not one of your kind? Another vampire? Precisely. The plot thickens. Just a hypothesis. Wouldn't set my heart on it till we know more. Right you are. Let's sum up what we know. Seems Deadlaugh's being blackmailed. Someone's been feeding him his victims' names. All noted down using one and the same Nazari ink, and not in his handwriting. Not much. But enough to ascertain Detlaf's innocence, clearly. Innocence? Well, certainly that he... this wasn't his idea. Actually, it is. Detlaf's being manipulated. Some lunatics turned him into a tool, making him kill. So it would seem. But this illuminates a path of action for us. We must find Renowed. Render the blackmail senseless. The lunatic or ticks will thus lose hold on Detlaf. That's one idea. Hmm. Could be worth a shot. But what about Detlaf? He gonna go on killing while I'm out searching for his lover? He will not. I shall convince him to stay his hand. Assure him you're a friend seeking to help. I'll await him here. He's sure to return sooner or later. Think he'll listen? He will. I'll await with you, maybe. No. He'll sense you from a mile off. Simply fail to appear. I'd better stay alone. You must trust me on this. Fine. Need to report to the Duchess first. So be it. We'll await you here. Detlaf and I both. You call Let's report to the Duchess and then I will uh, end this part here. Who would have thought? Knights trading in wine while some witcher guards the <laughs> My sword marks my path. Drinking Sonart. Not just any it's cure for the beast, a witcher. Do you like it here? I would kill for a bite. I wanna I wanna I see Yennefer. They they mentioned her a few times and I miss her. So I miss her and I miss Siri. Was that true necessary? No. We could fast travel, but we're taking the scenic route.
fight of the day. Geralt of Rivia, Master Witcher. I was not mistaken. You arrived and trouble followed soon after. Step aside. Got a matter for the Duchess. At last, Witcher. We've been on tenterhooks. Did you catch Milton's killer? Case is more serious than we thought. The beast? I couldn't kill it. Didn't manage. We sent you after a monster and you return with nothing? We are very disappointed. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Situation's not quite that simple. Beast's a powerful vampire. Ha! <laughs> is this a problem? Is it too much for a witcher? A monster slayer? But everyone knows how to end a vampire. Draw him by trick into sunlight. Or arm yourself with ample garlic and drive a stake through its heart. <sighs> Garlic's useless against vampires. Sun and stakes don't hurt him either. Those methods? Pure invention. Only work in legends and fables. And Buckthorn? When I was a child, Grandmama Ademarta always claimed Buckthorn drives off vampires. Silver sword's your best option for keeping them at bay. But it won't get the job done. Because only a higher vampire can truly kill another of its kind. Excuses. Ha! Your grace, I shall assemble a battue. Bring the matter to its end at once. The Witcher need but tell us where to find this monster. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> Go ahead. Send them to their death. Certain death. To a lone Witcher, perhaps? To forty of my men at arms? But another skirmish. Who the fuck even is this guy? 40, 50, 100, doesn't matter. Won't make any difference against him. You have not seen my guardsmen in action. Can they fight fog? Hit a target that moves faster than the wind? How? What creature can do such things? Are you listening? A higher Creatures vampire. Like this one. Higher vampires, we call them. Each one's a little different. Unique or exceptional, you might say. Some transform into giant bats. Others communicate with animals, command them. Yet all are still brainless beasts. Dead wrong. Thinking I want to. I want to. I want to strangle this guy. Catacans, for instance. They're ruled by instinct. Sure, attack anything that smells of blood. Higher vampires. They think. They employ reason. Monsters driven by reason. A curious contention. What then do you intend to do? First, strangle you. Second... <laughs> it's way beyond being some monster. This is a powerful being that's walked the world for centuries. Tja, impossible. If so great is their power, why have they not killed or enslaved us all? Because they don't want to! Don't usually meddle in our matters. Mostly stay out of our way, because they don't care about humans one way or the other. And they do not fear we shall wipe them out one day. <laughs> this guy. They'd probably be pretty amused if you asked them that. They're well aware of their strength. Then what can we do? Do you have a plan? <laughs> Try to talk to him. That's our best bet. I cannot believe this. Her grace summons a witcher to kill a monster. Instead, he wishes to chat with it. <laughs> know what I'm doing. His lover was kidnapped. He's being blackmailed. Blackmailed? Be so kind as to explain how a vampire might be blackmailed. Higher vampires? They're like us, motivated by emotions, not instinct. Not only are they intelligent to an extreme, they're emotionally... rich. Capable of feeling many things, even love. This one fell in love with a woman, a human, and he'll do anything to keep her from harm. You do not, I trust, suggest we let Milton's killer go free, or wait until it murders again. We must render it harmless as quickly as possible. Which is why that's my aim now, to prevent further attacks. Vampire's only half the problem. 
Blackmailers at fault chiefly. Kidnapped the woman to control the vampire. And what do you propose to do? I'll find the blackmailer, free the vampire's lover. You were to destroy him, not help him. No one else should die. That's most important. As soon as the woman's safe, he'll have no more reason to kill. Hmm. I admit to being swayed, Witcher. Thank you! You may be right. Someone's seeing reason here. Do you know anything about the blackmailer? Got one lead. A few scraps of paper. Blackmailer wrote the names of the vampire's victims on them. One of them stained. A drop of wine, looks like. So damn little to go on. You've no idea how wrong you are, my dear. Send for the Ducal Sommelier. Hop, hop! In Tucson, wine is sacred. Here there is no such thing as a drop of wine or stains therefrom. They are stains from a drop of Estest, Ervelus, Fiorano. Your Grace wished to see me. Witcher, show him the paper scrap. Why does everyone wear those little goofy glasses? <laughs> Benoit, it looks very can funny. you determine which wine made this stain? Mm. Mm, yes, yes. The, the west bank of the Saint Latour. <laughs> no, that, that's rather obvious. Aged in barrels of Beauclair oak. Hue, deep burgundy. Clarity, high. It's simple. Saint Real. The 1269 vintage. That's... That's impossible. The wine is produced at Castel Revello. Especially and exclusively for the ducal table. Perhaps some song real was stolen. We must go to the vineyard, see if there's not been an incident. Song real? Never heard of it. It's highly unlikely you've ever had a chance to partake of it. As I said, it is only ever served to the ducal family. Didn't stop it from ending up on that scrap of paper. Unless your grace's sommelier is mistaken. In matters of wine, Benoit is never mistaken. If he says it's Sonreal, it is Sonreal. We must ride to Castel Revello at once. Discover what has happened. Wait. Your grace wants to go with me? Out of the question. I hope you do not suppose we will sit on our ducal hiney and do nothing while our duchy is in grave danger. Your Grace, what you propose is far too dangerous. The Witcher should go alone. It pleases me to see you gentlemen finally agree on something. But I've made my decision. We shall go, accompanied by the best possible escorts. You, Captain, and Geralt. We will travel incognito. We've no wish to give the court any reason to gossip. For the duration of this mission, I release you from your obligation to adhere to court protocol. In short, from now on, I am Anna Henrietta, not your grace. Yes, your grace. Uh, <laughs> Witcher, are you ready? Yeah, ready to go. Excellent. Give me a moment. I must don something more appropriate and concealing. Then we will be off. This vampire? Have you ever faced its sword before? I have. How did it end? Did you kill it? Didn't have to fight him. Hadn't killed anyone. Have you ever heard of anyone defeating such a vampire? 
know of a man who defeated one, sure, but he didn't manage to kill it. Ultimately, only another vampire can kill a vampire. Didn't Eskel say he hunted a higher vampire? Or am I remembering that wrong? Let's go! Have attacked the wagon. Slower. We must help. Stay back, your grace. We shall see to this. I can't see. Back, you beast. Be gone. For. They were fortunate. Thank you. By. You saved our lives. Hooray! Come on, Roach. Oop, did I actually just axe here? Oopsie daisy. Tell me more about this vineyard, Castel Ravello. It's the best in all Tucson. An old master of the winemaking trade runs it, Fabricio. Be trustworthy? He's held his post for years. There's never been a problem, till now. I wish to know your thoughts, Geralt. The Sonreal stain, how did it wind up on the paper? Is someone from the vineyard blackmailing the vampire? Could be a servant. Could be the steward. Come on now. Maybe the wine was just stolen from the estate. <laughs> Captain de la Tour, we did not expect any visitors from the palace. How are affairs at court? Doubtless you've heard of the Beast of Beauclair. Well, we've our hands full. Especially since the rogue last attacked in the palace gardens. I trust her illustrious highness was not harmed. Kind of you to ask, Master Fabricio. I am well. Your... Your Grace? We were not warned. I shall order the Salon prepared at once. That won't be necessary. As you can see, we are not here on an official visit. Naturally. Might I ask then what has brought you to Castel Ravello? Came to see you. Got some questions. In this land, it is seen as polite to introduce oneself before asking any questions. This is Geralt of Rivia, a witcher. He has come to Toussaint on my personal invitation. Which is to say... Which is to say I expect you to treat him with the utmost respect. Of... of course, Your Grace. Did you hear that, witcher? Fabricio will be delighted to answer your every question. Want to talk about San Real? I am at your service. Some of this wine might have been stolen. Just a suspicion we have, but any burglaries lately? Burglaries? Not to my knowledge. And a few days past, I took stock of the inventory. Uh, all was accounted for. The barrels lie safely in the cellar, I assure you. Who hauls the barrels to the palace? We've our own garrison. Guards who have served here for years and would answer with their heads for the wine. We'll not get anywhere asking questions, I see. It's a waste of time. Your Grace? How am I to understand this? Master Fabricio, we have proof someone's gained access to Sonreal. Someone who should not have, which means one of two things. Either you lie to our face, or you are an idiot who has had wine stolen from under his nose and not even realized it. Whoa, In whoa, whoa. In either case, you shall answer for it. But, 
But... Silence! And listen. I shall inspect the barrels in person, thus giving you time to reflect. When I return, I expect to hear answers. <laughs> She's Remind not taking me. any prisoners. Where is this Andreal stored? In... in the main cellar, around the corner. I'll show you. I shall find it. Give me the key to the cellar and wait here. Oh, of course, Your Grace. Here it is. Come, Witcher. We shall wait here, Master Fabricio. What if Fabricio's blackmailing the vampire? Consider that? He has his flaws, but I would never suspect him of such a thing. He's been very loyal. He owes all he has to me. His father frittered away the family fortune. He left his son an encyclopedic knowledge of wine. That is all. Fabricio lived as a beggar until I appointed him steward of Castel Ravello. Only then did he come into his own. So where do we start? Let us see if all the barrels are present. Here's the inventory ledger. completed with no complications tapped above sediment line here it is barreling <coughs> mm, everything lines up at first glance neatly and thoroughly documented then we must follow our other lead Benoit said the stain came from the 1269 vintage let's find it Excellent wine. You've good taste. Est est. Est est. Think everyone and their mothers heard of this wine. Among the best in the world. Castel Ravello is famous for it. favorite adores it ah yes that sophisticated palette of his Stop up there, but where are the stairs? Or is there a ladder or something? <gasps> nope, they're just climbing up. Sangreal to a seventy. Sangreal, twelve seventy vintage. That's the wrong gear. Keep looking. Jump up. <gasps> Got it. Right here. 1269. What now? Let's see if any barrels are empty. Wanna open them? 
For now, a knock will suffice. If you hear a hollow thud, we will have found what we seek. Full. This one's full too. This one is full. This one's full too. Full. This one's full too. Looks like all the barrels are full. Dead end, I'm afraid. Full they are. The question is, are they full of Sanria? Grab a tap and a hammer. We shall open them one by one and taste. Ready. We can start. Ready. Step aside. So? Mm, slightly smoky, strongly tannic, definitely sonreal. Revolting, bitter plonk. Could have gone sour while aging. Impossible. This is not wine. This is contaminated refuse that should never have made it into a barrel. The fact that it did was no accident, I'm sure. Master Fabricio, let's see what he has to say about it. Master Fabricio, I am very disappointed. But, Your Grace, I... You are a step away from losing your head. Speak the truth and you might yet keep it. I... I, I admit it. I, I, I sold a barrel of Sorreal. I beg you to forgive me. Why did you do it? I couldn't resist. The sum they offered, it was enormous. Greed. I gave in. Is what I provide not enough? I wished to buy back my family's estate. For here, nothing is truly mine. I've a roof over my head, ample food to eat, but... What is a nobleman without land of his own? I shall tell you everything, if you agree to show me mercy. Who do you sell the wine to? A few weeks past at the pheasantry, a rich nobleman approached me. He, he called himself a diplomat, well-connected at court. He suggested we embark on an enterprise. Some of his clients had offered dizzying sums for even a drop of Sonreal. He was to serve as intermediary. This man's name? He never revealed it. He was tall, black-haired, and spoke with a foreign lilt. He claimed to hail from Sintra. I've no Sintrian aristocrat at court. Wine itself. How do you hand it over? We met under the cover of darkness in the ruins of Fort Astre. A dozen or so men came to collect. Armed men. The kind that stink of trouble. I had hauled the barrel there. They transferred it to their cart, and we went our separate ways. That's it? At the last you ever saw of them? They... that is to say, a, a few days passed. A, a messenger arrived. 
he said they wished to buy another barrel and, well, I've prepared it, have it ready to deliver. That's enough. Know all we need to know. Your Grace, I beg your forgiveness. Get out of my sight. Captain, have your men take Master Fabricio to the dungeon. He must answer for his crime. High treason the charge. What now, Witcher? We set a trap. Need to catch the wine thieves. Sintry and Noble could be our blackmailer. Next, transport. I'll take it to Fort Astra. Damien and his soldiers will cover me. For once, I agree with you. We will do as you say. Let me know when you are ready. Let's go. See no reason to wait. Let's get going. We will set out now. Position ourselves before you arrive. You will take the cart and meet us there. Fine. When the handoff begins, watch for my signal. Load of nasty people. How fare you this fine evening? Ah, our favorite vintner. That's an outfit. Can't say it's good. Why the rough and the. Yeah. That is not fashion. I'm sorry. It's not him. This is unusual music for this game. Well, Witcher. Just me, or did we agree you'd wait for my signal? That was the plan, but... Great shot. Good thing you reacted. Can't say how that would have ended otherwise. At your service. It was a good fight. We managed to capture one of the scoundrels. Let's ask him a few questions. Come on. Witcher, a moment. I was wrong about you. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't need to like each other. Just gotta do our jobs. If that's how you wish to treat it. At any rate, I see the effort you put forth. And I appreciate it. Let us go to her grace. She awaits nearby. Finally, you decide to be nice. Because you can't respect people, apparently. Unless they prove to you that they like to kill people. 
Not at all surprised. Expected she'd want to oversee this personally. The Master's eye fattens the cough. You're beginning to understand that, I see. This prisoner of yours, bring him to me. We must ask him some questions. Captain, do the honors. Who sent you? His name is Dog. They say he plowed your mother. <laughs> Bitch slap. Once again, who sent you? <coughs> your nun's lover. They call him... Wait. If he doesn't wish to speak, he needn't. I can think of several other ways he can be helpful. I'm certain the Witcher will need bait to lure the beast of Beauclair. What? <laughs> sure can. Fresh out. In that case, he's all yours. Captain, have your men find me a strong rope. Kind that won't snap when we hang this fellow from a tree. R rope? Live bait. Great for monsters, provided they catch the scent of its blood. But I'll see to that. What? No. Crikey, no! Don't let them! Stop screaming. Save your strength. Got a long night ahead of you. No! Don't let him! I I'll talk! Barrels. Where were you gonna take them? I don't know. Captain, need that rope after all. I truly don't know. Hornet's the leader, only he ever knew where to go. But he lies over there, dead. That one. The first barrel went to a warehouse at the port. But where this one was bound, I don't know. I, I speak true, you must believe me. Who hired you? He... he'll kill me. Ought to be worried about me right now. Who is he? Go on, man. Spit it out. The Cintrian. That is what they call him. I've never seen him, but I know he mustered the men for this caper. That's what they said, that we were working for the Cintrian. I don't know anything else. I swear it. Take him away. Throw him in the dungeon. He shall await trial there. Captain, we ride to town. Gather your men and seek out the Cintrian. Someone else must have seen him, must know of him. Yes, Your Grace. I'll report to the palace as soon as I learn anything. I shan't return to the palace. Our mission has not yet ended. The Witcher and I will await you at the guard post near the port. I'll join you. We'll meet there. We shall await your arrival. <sighs> Alright, y'all. I think with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this part here, because it's been quite a long one, and I'll be back very soon with more Witcher 3. So yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.